All right, today I'm going to um, do a 32 by 48. I'm going to use this pre-made 48 by 48 uh, thing. I'll have to cut it off at the bottom, but this time I'm going to use a full 48 and then just cut it off when I'm finished. Hopefully that works out well. And right now I'm going to stretch this to the canvas. All right, so the question of the day is, who is Stan Lee? As always, the best gesso to use is Blick Artist White Gesso. So this gives you a white, a lot better quality. Um, it's more expensive, but you're gonna get better layering with it. The other cheap stuff, it's like 40% cheaper, but it smells really bad and it's really liquidy. Um, not very good consistency. So this is much better blended. It's thicker. It's gonna be give it nicer base. Now, if you are starting to produce in volume, I would just skip this whole process, have someone gesso it, or by pre gesto canvas. layer we'll let this dry for about an hour or so and then get back to the second layer all right today we're gonna lay down kind of the base color so it's kind of been yellow oranges um, the reason for that is you can use white uh, but in the galleries you go there and they're like eh, it's white in the painting so <laughs> add a different color you know make sure it's all fully color to color and then start this style uh, we're gonna be working in metal mayhem today all right let's run through the colors primary yellow Van Dyke brown red oxide Curly orange, Quinn red, Quinn orange, Phala blue, Quinn blue, Phala green, Mars black, Titanium white. layer um, I went a little overboard <laughs> not overboard but I put the orange and yellow and then I just started working on it because um, it has a nice blend when you do that um, I'm adding in gesso as of course um, to get the lighter tones um, it's basically burnt orange <coughs> this primary yellow in here in the background I'll probably bring that primary yellow a little bit back to bring that more prominent 
and play more with this burnt orange, which is a really beautiful color. But I got to play between that and this darker. This darker, I probably have to cut back a little bit. I've cut back with the white, but probably having the orange will make it pop. And we still have to do the purple, so we'll see where that layer goes. I mean, it's going to be tough because it's nice as is, is brown and orange. But client wanted, you know, these purple color and orange that I did before in my last painting. But he wants it in this style, so we'll see how it goes from there. All right, today what we're going to do is we got the orange, a little bit of the brown. It's pretty white, but I'm going to add the purple on top. And then at the end, we'll bring back more of these darker oranges to kind of make it pop. <laughs> light blue on here, a little bit dark blue, um, the red, the Quinn red, so that's kind of blending in. Um, not really seeing it make that much purple, so I might have to do another layer in purple. Um, I am going to bring back this nice orange. I don't think there's enough of it now to contrast with the purple. And uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. Um, we're getting some purples, I think, here, but we'll see once it uh, fully dries how it's going to look. All right, next we're going to add kind of yellow orange back in again, and then we'll come back and do this darker purple. Right now it's kind of light blue. It's got a little bit of purple there, but not quite coming together as I want. So we'll see. All right, we kind of worked in some yellows in here, um, a little bit. Um, the browns again, this nice uh, burnt orange. And the next layer is to add the purple. This time I'm gonna add real purple. It didn't blend so well. <laughs> I got some purple on the light end, but not on the dark end, so I need to get that in there. Um, but yeah, it's kind of coming together. I got these nice streaks. I gotta let that fully dry, otherwise they'll disappear if I use it right now and just it'll get wiped. So I wanna keep those little lines. Hopefully after the next layer goes through, so we'll see where it goes from here. <laughs> black to kind of contrast this is dry a lot darker so you get a really nice pop on these areas uh, from the lights to the dark um, I've added the contrasting line to kind of break that up and give it more you know interesting because if people don't see the video they'll be like how oh, the hell do I make this you know this goes in through here cuts through there so it just adds a little more layering between the different layers besides the blends obviously so we'll see where it goes from here um, I'll let it dry and then we'll see how it goes it might be the end I might add a little more lights. We'll see how it balances out. So Stanley, probably you guys most know, is one of the closest um, creators of the Marvel world. And it actually went through several iterations. It started under, I think it was Atomic Comics, and then it went to another name, and then it finally came up with the Marvel. And he worked, he trained as a teenager under Kirby, who was one of the great um, drawer, you know, animators for the, not animation, but he drew the actual comics, right? And he was a total beast. And they kind of parted ways. Kirby went to a different place. Well, he was highlighting for DC at the same time, kind of doubling his pay. And Marvel found out, they got pissed and fired him. And then Kirby always kind of blamed Lee. <laughs> um, Lee later kind of took on a lot of the promotion of the brand, you know, traveling around doing the comic book circuit and then later trying to promote Marvel films, which you knew grew into the 2000s into this great kind of uh, symmetry of great films. And it really took 20, 30 years to kind of, you know, work your way through Hollywood, establish your credentials, even though, even though Stan Lee was one of the um, creators of the comic books, they just didn't get respect in Hollywood as far as script writing. So it took him a while to kind of get, get to know people, get the connections, actually for CGI to ca uh, catch up. And interestingly enough, it's one of the earliest films with Blade, which is one of uh, Stan Lee's creations under Marvel, 
was that his uh, cameo was actually cut from the, the footage, which is kind of a shame because, you know, every, that's one of the key things of a Marvel film is to have Stan Lee in the background. So he's always been kind of the rah-rah person as well as in the earlier days, the 40s, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, um, he was the editorial and he'd actually write all these scripts and then he kind of handed it off to editors underneath him that would kind of fill in the blanks. And so that was kind of the Marvel method that he established as far as kind of, he would kind of bring in the beginning, the middle, end, and then they would just say, hey, you transition the whole thing, figure out all the in-between parts. So it really gave a budding opportunity to a lot of different comic book writers to learn the ropes under Stan Lee, but also not have this dictator kind of um, thing. He just kind of, they gave him the root elements to kind of build their own story within the story. So that created a lot of different synergies within the Marvel world and created a great set of comic books that later became movies under Stan Lee's kind of driving that um, Marvel films in Hollywood as he moved from New York to Hollywood. So. That's Stan Lee. All right, we just finished the painting. Let's take a closer look. So we got these nice orange, uh, light purples on the top. Um, and I have some little of that burnt red underneath, which is really nice. Um, below we have some of this yellow and it goes into this really nice dark burgundy color on top of the light purple, which is good contrast. Uh, we have the light purple, the blues, um, there's really dark purple on the bottom. And a little bit of lighter is there with, that's kind of a brown white. So I think overall it's a pretty good painting. Anyway, I think the battery is about to die. <laughs> that's why the camera is acting goofy, but yeah, overall I think it's a pretty solid painting. Uh, it's got really nice balance, really kind of this really nice line work to kind of break up the tension as well as kind of suggest that uh, these cracks kind of go through the whole painting. Um, yeah, it is a commission, so I had to, you know, I was kind of st stuck with the colors that I need to work with. Um, and I basically did that. I think, you know, I stretched it a little bit using this burgundy color versus um, the dark blue per se. But I wanted that contrast between the dark blue, the purple, the lighter blues, the lighter purples the lighter oranges, so kind of, a, you know, full range of colors because um, it mixes on this style of painting. So hopefully you guys like it. Give me a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe, you can subscribe below. And I'll see you in the next painting review. Thanks for watching, guys.